Welcome, folks. If you're just uh, logging in now, we will be starting this mortgage foreclosure prevention webinar shortly. Uh, people are still entering, and so we'll wait about one or two minutes, and then uh, we'll begin our webinar. While you're uh, kind of we're in a wait mode here, uh, we request that you re mute your audio, and you might want to switch to speaker view to watch the program, which we are going to have some slides, and so it'll be easier uh, for you to uh, read those slides if you're in the speaker view. Uh, we have a feature of a q and A. I I know it says there use the chat feature to ask questions, but there isn't a, a, a chat channel. There is a Q&A channel. You can put, place your questions there and we will answer your questions. This webinar is being recorded. And if you registered for this webinar, you'll receive a link to the recording. And I believe our presenter has agreed that we can also uh, uh, disseminate the presenter handouts as well. So again, we'll be beginning, we'll be uh, starting shortly. Uh, we're still letting, admitting people into the waiting room, uh, from the waiting room into the session. So we'll start in about a minute. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the New Mexico Access to Justice Community Webinar Series. The New Mexico Access to Justice Commission is appointed by the New Mexico State Supreme Court, and their task is to try to assist New Mexicans to address civil legal issues. And so as a result of that, we are, have been for the last couple of years offering a series of community webinars where we feature various topics in civil legal areas uh, and try, try to provide information in terms of resources that are available to uh, New Mexicans and how you go about navigating those resources. Our present, pre presentation today is on mortgage foreclosure prevention. And uh, we will be starting that in just a minute. Uh, before we uh, begin, again, I just want to uh, let folks know if you have a um, question, you can place your question in the Q&A channel. There's a Q&A channel. If you look at the bottom ribbon uh, of your Zoom uh, window, you will see a Q&A uh, uh, button. You can uh, toggle that button and it'll pop up and you can address, place your question in there. We will answer the questions uh, upon uh, the completion of this of the uh, presentation by our speaker. Our speaker today is Eric Sutton. He's the managing attorney for United South Broadway Corporation Fair Lending Center based in Albuquerque, New Mexico. Eric's extensive experience in consumer law, foreclosure defense, and real estate litigation includes a term as supervising attorney for the Chicago Volunteer Legal Services Foreclosure Mediation Programs. He's also a graduate of the Chicago Bar Association's Justice Entrepreneurs Project, where he started a solo practitioner, practitioner firm focused on providing affordable legal services. He was awarded his JD from the University of Pittsburgh and earned an LLM in international economic law from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. United South Broadway Corporation's Fair Lending Center for Closure Defense Project was named the Outstanding Program of 2012 by the New Mexico State Bar. Please join me in welcoming Eric Sutton. And Eric, welcome to our, our presentation, and I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Juan. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm going to uh, put some slides up myself uh, in just a second here uh, to, as, as part of the program today. Uh, there we go. Uh, first, however, a little bit about United South Broadway Corporation. Um, we've been uh, operating for over 30 years now. Um, and tw uh, over 20 of those years, we've been uh, working on legal issues related to foreclosures. Um, we, uh, I'm not the first managing attorney. Uh, there's been a number of uh, my predecessors, but we've worked on uh, issues ranging from 
presenting uh, litigation to the roundhouse, uh, such as the Home Loan Protection Act, uh, to fighting uh, on behalf of borrowers. Sorry, is, is there someone talking? Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, to providing protection from for borrowers who are experiencing foreclosures, uh, litigation, uh, and helping them navigate a fairly complex process. Personally, I've been working on foreclosure defense um, since I started my legal career uh, over 13 years now, almost 14. Um, it was my very first case was a foreclosure defense case and uh, kind of fell into it and been doing it ever since. So uh, I'm pleased to uh, present some of the information about how foreclosures function in New Mexico uh, to you today. So to begin, um, most foreclosures start with, uh, well, actually, let's back up a quick second. What, what is a mortgage? Um, let's, let's start with the definition of that. Um, a mortgage is a contract between the borrower and the bank. Uh, it's actually two contracts. Uh, it is the mortgage contract and the underlying note contract. The note's very simple. Uh, if any of you have done you have ever purchased a home, um, you know you may have even missed it in in the stack of papers that you signed that was this thick when you're doing the closing. But it's usually just a two, maybe three page document that says the bank is giving you X amount of money and you're going to pay it back uh, with interest over a certain period of time. Uh, and uh, if you stop paying it, they can collect it. Uh, the mortgage contract, however, is what allows the bank to actually foreclose on the house. It makes the house the collateral, the security for that note. Um, and so those two contracts operate in conjunction with each other. Um, and usually we just refer to them together as a mortgage. Um, but what normally happens when a foreclosure uh, starts or what, what start what happens to start the process towards a foreclosure at this point is the borrower is unable to make their payments. Um, and a mispayment is a breach of that contract. Uh, if the banks cannot file uh, a foreclosure for 120 days after the first that that date of the first default, that first missed payment. Um, but during that period, they will uh, they will send a notice to the borrower that the loan is past due, uh, give them an opportunity to, to bring the loan current before they uh, accelerate the debt, meaning that they call it all due, um, and then uh, proceed with a foreclosure lawsuit. So, you know, for anybody who is, you know, at, at that stage, you know, before foreclosure, uh, it's very important to keep an eye out in the mail for these kind of notices uh, to make sure that uh, they are receiving them and hopefully to be able to take advantage of them, of uh, that opportunity to get the loan back on track. Um, and of course, if that doesn't happen, the next step is the foreclosure that the bank will, will file. Uh, foreclosures are almost all filed in, in our state district courts. Uh, Rarely they will be filed in a, in a federal uh, court, but it, it can happen. But for the purposes of today, we're just going to talk about district court. Um, it's a legal action uh, and uh, it's filed in district courts because New Mexico is a judicial foreclosure state, meaning before the bank can uh, foreclose, they have to prove to the courts that they have the rights to do so, that there's actually been a, you know, a breach of the contracts, such as a missed payment. Uh, and uh, ask the courts to give them the, the rights or to to declare the property foreclosed and give them the right to sell the house uh, in order to recoup on the debt. Um, that means that the borrowers have legal rights of their own. They have uh, the rights to, to civil due process, meaning they have they have a right to know that the lawsuit's going on, uh, and they have a right to answer it and present whatever defenses they might have uh, or even counterclaims. Um, and uh, that process can be can be fairly lengthy. Uh, at a minimum, it usually takes about a year um, if everything moves as quickly as theoretically possible. Um, but most of them take a year and a half to two years to actually get through. 
uh, again, depending on how quickly things move along. Uh, if, if a foreclosure case is filed, uh, you can look up uh, the status of the case, uh, uh, just as you can with any other lawsuits in, uh, in the state, a civil lawsuit. Um, you would not be able to, as, as a member of the general public, be able to get any of the pleadings off, uh, off um, online, but you'd be able to see generally what, what the names of the documents that have been filed um, and, and maybe even understand where the case is at from that. Uh, something else, you can identify who the judge is, where the action is taking place, and um, who, which lawyer um, off law firm is handling the case, I believe. So I'm going to go through a quick example of what a um, complaint for foreclosure looks like. This is a redacted, very old uh, uh, case. Uh, as you can see from the top in the stamp, it's 2013 case out of uh, Albuquerque. Um, for, and, and this is really directed more towards those who are unfamiliar with the legal process. Um, for anyone who's had legal training watching this, just maybe can kind of tune out for a second. But um, you know, every like every uh, complaint, uh, it has a caption, it uh, has a heading that says who the parties are, uh, what where the, where the case has been filed, uh, the case number, uh, and, and most importantly, it would theoretically name whoever uh, uh, whoever owns the property and, and the borrower uh, in that uh, on that mortgage. Uh, if you are the borrower, you should be listed. Uh, if you own any interest in the property. Uh, if you have any, uh, if you're in, if your name's in the deed, you should be listed as a defendant. Um, if you're not, then that there might be a, a reason for that, or so it might be a mistake on behalf of the, of, uh, the attorney filing the case. It does happen, um, but you, you should look carefully to make sure that you're included if you should be. Um, we'll, we'll get into this a little bit about responding. Uh, that's that's part of the answer. Uh, I'll get to that a little bit more in a second. Um, but this gives you an idea of the general structure of how it, it starts. It says, okay, there's there's been this notes, there's been a mortgage that talks about the property and the legal description of the property. Um, and then it talks about uh, what happens in the event of defaults, which it, uh, which basically means that they are proceeding with the foreclosure because that's what the contract says they can do. Uh, it talks about the last payment that was made, how much is, remains due, at what interest rates. Um, and it talks about a redemption period, which we, again we will get to later on in the, the presentation. Uh, it will ask for attorney's fees and other costs, which in um, in every note and mortgage contract that I've ever seen uh, is allowed for them to collect uh, if they have to proceed with the foreclosure. Uh, and you know, depending on the, the type of mortgage, you, they'll usually claim that they're the first lien uh, on the mortgage, uh, as they generally are, or first lien on the property, as they generally are, meaning other, you know, like second mortgages or HELOCs or things along those lines would potentially be, would, would be inferior to their position and be subject to the foreclosure, same as the borrower would. Um, and then they ask for uh, the relief that they, um, that they that they want, which is to have the foreclosure declared and be allowed to sell the property. Uh, the law, the, as it states here, the attorney that files the case will be listed at the very bottom of this pleading, um, you, with their phone number, with the you know office of the phone number, sometimes the email. Um, uh, that may or may not be the the, case, the, the attorneys for the entire case. Uh, very often. Uh, especially if the case is, uh, uh, becomes lengthy, banks will get a new attorney to handle it. Uh, they'll just transfer a, a bunch of cases in, in a group to a new um, attorney's office, and they will take those over. So you may see that see something like that happen in a case like that if it if it goes on for a while. Uh, in the case of Castle Law Group, it, those cases all got transferred uh, because uh, that group that firm was disbanded because they were actually uh, operating improperly. So uh, that's that's an unusual reason. Uh, usually it's just because the bank just wants to transfer them to another firm. Let's see how things, see if another firm can handle it differently. All right, so as a litigant, as a borrower, um, 
you are required to answer the complaint uh, in order to participate in the in the in the case or to, or to defend the position that you that you have. Um, as I as the slide just a little bit previously mentioned, you have to respond to every single numbered complaint in the paragraph um, and every allegation in that complaint. So that can be a very detailed process, um, and by, but you need to either affirm you know, or, or, or admit uh, the allegations, you deny the allegations, uh, or say that you don't know enough to be sure whether you can admit or deny. Uh, all three are valid responses. Um, and, and these, this, generally speaking, you're going to want to communicate with the attorney for the bank um, and a mediator if you have, if, if there's mediation going on, uh, about loss mitigation, uh, which is the general term for figuring out a, a, a settlements with the bank, uh, such as uh, loan modification or reinstatement, something along those lines. Uh, if there is participation, be sure to participate. Uh, sorry, if there is mediation, be sure to participate in that. When, it, when and if the bank files a motion for summary judgment, when, which is where they try to wrap up the case, essentially, you want to file, the borrower will want to file a response to that. And the borrower will want to attend court hearings, uh, many of which take by, place by Zoom or at least phone call to these days. Uh, in the aftermath of COVID, but can also uh, be held in person in court. Uh, and if they're operating without an attorney, they, the borrower needs to be prepared to make the arguments uh, to, to defend them, the, their case as well. Uh, so in an answer, and I'll get to an example answer in just a minute here, uh, it's the official response to the bank's complaints. Uh, you tell the court what's, what is true, uh, what's not true, and what you don't know, as I mentioned before. Uh, you can all uh, the borrower can also raise affirmative defenses to explain what happened, um, and I'll show you again on a sample form. I'll point out some of what those might be. A foreclosure lawsuit is uh, what's called a case in equity. Uh, it's it's an equitable proceeding, uh, and I won't go too much into what that means. But essentially, it means the court, as part of uh, the crafting its its it's relief for the uh, parties as the case goes on uh, has to consider what's fair to both parties. Uh, and, I'm, and I have to stress that it's, it has to consider what's fair to both parties. And that means that they're going to take into account the contract and the fact that the bank lent money to somebody and it's, and it's out of that money and it, it's not getting that money back. Um, and it has to take that into, you know, it has to be fair to that argument as well as the borrower's arguments as to why, in the circumstances of why they might not be making that uh, those payments and paying that loan back, uh, whatever the reasons may be, such as medical issues, unemployment, divorce, et cetera. Um, once an answer is filed, that means that the bank cannot proceed with just getting a default judgment. Um, a default judgment is 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 requested and, uh, and and normally granted if the borrowers don't file an answer the bank the bank just goes in and says uh, with a motion uh, please you know no one no one's responding to the case no one's participating there's no one saying that you know this case is shouldn't move forward so just you know give us a judgment and the and the, um, and the court will grant them judgment and then they can proceed with sale. Uh, unless, you know, again, unless somebody comes in and says, whoa, 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 sorry, sorry, we didn't answer, we, um, we meant to, uh, and the court gives them the opportunity to uh, get back on track with that. But again, that, that requires that the borrower pays attention to what's going, you know, to who comes to their door with documents, what's getting mailed to them, um, and that they are, in fact, participating in the lawsuits to prevent some, you know, a, a, the easy way forward for the bank. In, in the form of default judgments. So here's a sample answer um, that United South Broadway uh, has uh, that we help, that we give to borrowers that we help. Um, and the answer section, is we do it very simply. We uh, generally just say admit or agree with the following paragraphs and they just and refer to them by number as we talked about before. Um, uh, 
and, and then there's just the part where they don't know whether or not those and those uh paragraphs are true uh and then there's a section for affirmative defenses uh for example the if the person did not receive uh the notice of acceleration and default saying that they were behind in the payments and giving them the opportunity to catch up uh that's that's that is an allowable defense um and there's a number of other uh, options here um relating to various defenses um so, you know for example if if the loan had been in the middle of, of of a trial payment plan or a loan modification plan um especially if the servicer had accepted payments and the uh and the servicer i mean is the party that actually collects the payments um but they moved forward with the foreclosure anyway that's that's called dual tracking it shouldn't have happened um you know that's a defense to, to the foreclosure um and again there's there's various other possibilities here there's um failure to mitigate damages uh there's real party and interest meaning whoever owns the loan doesn't uh, isn't the party that's actually bringing the lawsuit um there's a, a number of possibilities here that you could circle at the bottom that, on the form that we have um but you don't have to do it on a form like like what we have you can write it out yourself uh, and and describe what's going on uh in your case you can always attach another uh document another page to this to, to an answer form uh to further explain what's going on if you would like to do that um just the whoever the borrower has to remember that you know what what they're putting in the record is uh, what they're putting down in their answer and their defenses is going to be part of the record and they're going to be taken into consideration uh by the courts so if they're saying you know if they're saying yes i stopped making payments then that's going to be admission of the reason for the default um if they're you know it so, so they can't admit paying paying the default uh or miss, missing payments but also be challenging you know the lawsuit for uh not have not have i'm oh, sorry they should not also then be saying that the lawsuit shouldn't have been filed because they were making payments those two things conflict um and can, can cause problems for the borrower down the line as they're trying to defend the case uh, and of course, the, the final uh, page of the answer is a request for the, from the defendants to the court and how to uh, dispose of the case, uh, preferably by dismissing the complaint for foreclosure uh, or ordering the case into mediation. And for anything else the judge feels is, is um, fair to the parties. And then, of course, they sign with their mailing address, telephone number, which are required as part of um, uh, appearing in the lawsuits and certifying that it was delivered to the plaintiff, again, if they're proceeding pro se. Uh, so at this point, we kind of draw back from the technical aspects of uh, the legal proceedings, and we go into working with the bank to try to resolve this case uh, through loss mitigation. Uh, and, and again, loss mitigation is really used as a catch-all term for uh, negotiating with the bank to to come to some sort of settlement. Excuse me. Uh, it's the best way to resolve the case because you don't really want to have a judgment uh, for closure, and it's usually the way that's um, you come you're able to come to an agreement with the bank uh, in terms of a loan modification or a reinstatement or another option that will allow the borrower to save the home. Just because um, loss mitigation is going on uh, doesn't mean that you can ignore what's going on in the lawsuit, um, unless the case is stayed. And I'll get to what that means in a minute here. Um, but if, if the case is not stayed and you're still talking to the bank, you still need to go and, and check on what's going on in the court because the judge has no idea what's going on with, uh, with your negotiations with the bank, unless you tell them or the bank tells them. And maybe the bank doesn't tell them everything that's going on. And that, so that is, you know, the, the borrower wants to make sure that they're keeping the, the, the court updated on what's happening. So common loss mitigation options, um, there are, are a few general categories, or two general categories. One is retention, the other is non-retention. 
Retention is where the borrower keeps their home. The, uh, common ways of doing that are through loan modification, which changes the terms of the loan to put it back on track. The principal balance, interest rates, and length of the loan are the most common terms to change. Uh, usually what happens is the bank will take anything that, any arrears, meaning anything that's past due, any charges to the accounts uh, that they've had to, that they put on because of the foreclosure, like attorney's fees or paying for taxes, uh, homeowner's insurance uh, or property inspections, and add those to the principal balance. Uh, and that brings the loan due because then there's no arrears left but that increases the amount of money that the borrower will have to pay back over time. Um, interest rate hopefully would be lowered uh, these days. The, um, that's unfortunately often not the case. Lots of times they are interest rates actually raised because of current market rates. Um, the length of the loan is often extended as much as up to 40 years, uh, depending on what, um, what kind of loan it is and, and who uh, is backing the loan. Forgiveness of the debt, including arrears and attorney's costs, is extremely rare. Uh, borrowers should be aware of this. Uh, they, it doesn't mean they can't ask to have some of that forgiven. Um, but banks are in a strong negotiating position um, because the contract says they can foreclose uh, if there's missed payments. Uh, and they generally just you know, push ahead and just refuse to, to do any sort of forgiveness, uh, forgiveness uh, because they don't really have to. Uh, and that's the unfortunate truth. Um, oftentimes there is a three month trial payment plan before a permanent modification is prepared. Um, that's not always the case. Sometimes it goes straight to a permanent modification. Um, there are a lot of options these days that do just go straight to a permanent modification. Um, but uh, that doesn't mean that you, you that a borrower uh, couldn't see that that sort of trial payment plan, and that means that they're going to ask for you know monthly payments uh, that are approximately the same amount of what the permanent payment would be, um, to make sure that that that's, you know the borrower gets you know gets used to making those payments again and is able to make those payments uh, to give the bank some confidence that when the loan is permanently modified the borrower will continue making those payments. Um, there are other issues that can prevent modifications, such as other liens. Uh, that can be uh, judgment liens from, from uh, like a credit card debt, for example. Uh, it can be liens from, from, state, uh, from government agencies like water departments or uh, trash departments. Uh, that for people who didn't make their, their payments on time, uh, there can be tax liens. Uh, those, I mean, the banks will uh, insist that those are paid off before they will offer a modification. And that has to do with um, maintaining their priority as being the first in line to be able to foreclose uh, in the future. Uh, the, and be able to to subject all those other liens to, um, to to be able to subject all the other liens to foreclosure, and it's related to that. Um, so that's so if if you know that you have other liens out there, um, other debts that may be um, on the households, you have to look into those too as as part of this process. Reinstatement is very simple. It's just paying current everything that's due, and then again that includes. Those are rears and costs, um, such as attorney's fees. Uh, and it, while I, I again don't want to say that you can't uh, ask for some of that to be written down, it's probably not going to happen. Uh, non retention options, uh, sometimes it is, it, 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 these cases do play out to the end. Um, and there are, and the bank does not agree to modify the loan, um, and the borrower is not able to bring the loan current. Uh, in those situations, there are other options. Um, uh, you can sell the property. Uh, these days, it doesn't. Oftentimes, you don't have to do a short sale uh, because the values of the property these days often are above what is actually owed, uh, just because of incre recent increases in home prices. Um, short sales are fairly unusual, 
Uh, that's a sale where you have to get the bank's permission um, to proceed with the sale because the amount owed is more than the value of the property. Uh, deed in lieu of foreclosure is essentially saying, bank here, take ownership of the property and we'll walk away. Um, that banks usually want to see that you try to sell, sell the property before you do that. And if there's any other liens on the property, like we talked about before, they, they just won't do it. Um, and then you can also do a, what's called a stipulated in rem judgments, where uh, the bank agrees not to pursue the homeowner, the, the borrower, for any um, unpaid balance after the sale on the account. And uh, the borrower lets the judgment go ahead and the sale of the property go ahead. Part of those, part of that non retention uh, options uh, usually involves some sort of cash for keys agreement where the borrower, uh, where the bank pays the borrower a, a nominal sum about you know, somewhere between $1,500 to $3,000 um, is, is standard. Um, you know, these days with higher rents, you know, you're probably going to be asking for more. Whether that happens depends on the situation and the bank. Um, but essentially, you're saying, um, if you give me a little bit of money to help me move, I'll make, I'll, I promise to make sure that the, the, I leave the house in good condition and when you take it over. Uh, and there's usually an agreed move out date involved in that as well. Um, we also, uh, as part of some of these options, we also now have the Homeowner Assistance Fund program. It's a federal program. Uh, homeowners can apply for non taxable grants to catch up on their mortgages, usually it's just to reinstate. Um, that there's a cap of $20,000 per household in New Mexico. Uh, that money can be used for past due mortgage payments, property taxes, homeowners insurance, and other foreclosure related charges uh, in order to bring the loan current. Uh, it, is, it is possible to get future payments, future mortgage payments um, made part of that uh, grant if, if someone in the house is unemployed uh, and there is only one reinstatement allowed per household in, in the program. Uh, it is administered by the Mortgage Finance Authority and I have a link here for you to, to go visit that page to learn more about it. So There's some uh, uh, frequently asked questions and some, and some uh, more detailed explanations on that site. But the main goal is to either, um, well, is either bring current any, any loan with arrears that are lower than 20,000, but if the arrears are more than 20,000, which does frequently happen, um, you, you can use those funds in, um, in conjunction with the borrower's own contribution to do a full reinstatement, or you can negotiate a modification with the bank that incorporates the $20,000 and brings a loan current that way. Uh, I, I, it is. It can be very complicated to do that. Um, you probably borrower is probably going to want to seek some advice on how to make that happen. If uh, that is, if they do have to um, reinstate with their own money or get a modification as part of it, uh, because there's a lot of logistics and communication and planning to line up when payments get made to the bank to make it all work out. Um, so, mediation programs. The primary mediation programs uh, in New Mexico are called the foreclosure settlement programs. Uh, they are available in the first districts, second judicial districts, and 13th judicial districts. Um, and then other districts have partnerships with those programs. Um, so it really depends on where you're located, whether or not this is available to you. Uh, it's specifically for foreclosure cases with dedicated um, court employees who are mediators who are experienced in the foreclosure process, who handle, do nothing but handle foreclosure mediation day in and day out. Um, many, many cases are referred automatically when the, after the complaint is filed, soon after that complaint is filed. And um, so there's a mail that's sent to the borrower informing them that it's in the program um, and, and requiring the, the borrower uh, to attend an orientation uh, in order to continue their participation in the program. So again, checking for mail, very important uh, to make sure that they know that that program's uh, going on and that the mediation is going on. Uh, the case is stayed in the, in the mediation program. I talked about this briefly before. 
stayed means that nobody that the case doesn't move forward. There's the parties can't file motions or proceed with sale. Uh, the parties can only participate in mediation and negotiations to try to come up with a settlement. That is, uh, I mean, that's the primary goal of what of the program and letting the parties just do what they want in, in the case would prevent that um, parties from sitting down meaningfully. In the FSP, most of the negotiations are handled through informal phone calls uh, and emails between the parties. Uh, if it is possible, if uh, the parties would get to a point where in-person mediation is um, is appropriate, and that, that can you know that would be scheduled uh, with the mediator uh, and the parties and their attorneys, uh, if any are involved, and um, you know, it'd be a lengthier version of, tr of trying to work something out. Um, and, you know, depending on the issue of the case, that may or may not be possible. Uh, most important, the FSP is, does not require any payment from, from the borrower, from the, from the defendants, uh, in order to participate. And, and again, the, if, if the defendant is, if the case is sent to the program, the defendant must attend this informational workshop uh, within 30 days of the date of the referral order uh, that they'll receive in the mail. The other option uh, for mediation is just what I'm, what I'm calling standard mediation. Um, it is uh, what would be available if the parties wanted to have a third party assist them in trying to work something out um, that can be expensive. Uh, you know, some mediators can charge $300 an hour. Um, which you know can be can be a significant cost. Uh, some borrowers may be able to afford that. Some might not. Um, and it also, it also it, it's the mediator, the which is usually a former lawyer, former judge, uh, or even sorry, practicing lawyer or former judge, um, may or may not be as familiar with the foreclosure process uh, and loss mitigation process. So there's there's a cost benefits uh, that has to be thought about in in, in determining whether to, to move forward with something like this. Sometimes the court requires mediation uh, in a scheduling order in a case, uh, in which case, you know, the parties must participate. It is possible for a borrower to uh, ask the judge not to have to pay uh, if, you know, based upon their financial situation. And um, the judge will make a decision about whether or not to um, require the, the, the bank to pay for all of it or not. Uh, and it usually requires a little bit more legwork in advance of the mediation in terms of providing the mediator with a lot of information about what's happening in the case, what you know, what's what the parties have been working on, what their situation is, in order to familiarize themselves with what's going on. But usually, this is reserved for cases that have tr very tricky, unusual, complex questions of law. Um, not for, not in, in, you know, not not for you know. A, 80, 85% of the cases, would this be really appropriate? Okay, so let's say mediation doesn't work out or loss mitigation doesn't work out. Um, parties aren't able to come to an agreement. Um, bank doesn't want to modify the loan, borrower can't reinstate, but doesn't want to leave the house um, or sell it. Um, the bank will then move forward you know, assuming that the, the borrower has filed an, an answer, the bank will move forward with a motion for summary judgments. That is where they're asking the courts, courts to, you know, say you win the case. Um, you know, this is a way of moving the case forward without having go, to go through the process of a trial. Um, bank is, and banks usually say, well, here's the contract. We didn't get the money. Let's foreclose. Um, and oftentimes that's essentially enough to win the case because that's what the contract says. Um, there's two aspects to the judgments. One is what's called in personam. Um, and that just means um, against the person. Uh, and, and it's in reference, in this case, it's in reference to the money that that person owes. Uh, the bank is asking for a judgment saying that that person owes X amount that's due on the loan and gives them the ability to subtract whatever they get back out of a sale of the property from that total amount and then be able to go after the person 
later on for whatever's remaining. Um, bankruptcy in, in you know, borrower may want to consider bankruptcy to address that issue at some point. In REM judgments means against the property. Um, the, the court has to file, you know, has to enter a judgment against the property to clear the title to allow the bank to sell the property free and clear to whoever um, purchases it, purchases it at the auction. Oh, and, and just to, and if the bank does not, if this bank only asks for an in rem judgment, they are not pursuing the borrower for money. They're just asking to be able to sell the property and clear the title. Important thing to know. So if someone has already filed bankruptcy and doesn't actually technically owe the bank any money anymore, the bank can foreclose against the property, but they can't pursue the borrower for money uh, afterwards. Um, preparing for MSJ for, as a borrower. Um, you got to keep all the documents you get. You got to keep you got to keep them organized. Um, it's it is. I've I, I've seen a lot of cases that have struggled to you know where there might even be a good reason to um, to defend the case, but it boils down to being unable to prove the defense um, because we, because the documentations that might be important to the case are just not available. Um, it's important to keep track of when the borrower made payments and how much and keep track of any receipts uh, for those payments. Uh, make sure those payments show up on bank statements, things, things like that. If, you, if the borrower talks to the bank, it's important to take notes on that. Um, you know, as you're talking to the, to, you know, during the phone call and, you know, right after the phone call, um, you know, even, even take notes on if the bank called and didn't leave a message. If you can see in the on the uh, caller ID that it was from the bank, you know, just write down when when that when that happened. Um, th some some of those some of that information can be valuable, and you, and the borrower can send discovery requests to the bank's attorneys. Now this is a complex process. When I say discovery, um, it's essentially asking the bank questions uh, and and asking them for documents related to the loan, um, and, and you know, related to the to the lawsuits, but um, you know, it, to truly get into it, most borrowers are going to need the advice of an attorney. Um, but at, you know, but they can send some you know requests in writing, asking for you know at, at least a copy of the bank's accounting documents and a copy of the you know, of of the um, the communications and the letters that are you know that are related to the account, um, just to make you know just to see what the bank has. Uh, and what the bank might present as part of the motion for summary judgment. Um, there's nothing. It, again, it's not. It's it's not necessarily something the borrower will want to participate in, but it's something they can participate. In. Uh, how to respond to an MSJ? Um, every party has 15 days to file a response to any motion, including a motion for summary judgment. Uh, in that response. Um, you need to present the evidence that there are genuine issues of material fact, meaning that the borrower the borrower deserves a trial, or that the case deserves to be held, you know, to be um, resolved through a trial. Um, that there's a disagreement over what facts are involved and what facts might mean. Um, you know, that includes attaching documents to the response and art making the argument in the response as well. Uh, some of that evidence can be um, the borrower's notarized affidavit. Um, you know, again, some, some of the documents that can support the case are closing documents, letters from the servicer, account statements. Um, really, any evidence that the borrower thinks supports their case um, needs to be attached to that response. Um, and again, it might be documents that they only got through discovery requests, such as account statements. Um, you, the in order the borrower has to send a copy of the attorney, uh, sorry, copy of the response to the attorney for the bank. Um, the bank then has 15 days to file a reply to that response, and then the, the bank will request a uh, hearing from uh, on the motion before the judge. Borrowers need to make sure if they're proceeding pro se to show up to the courtroom uh, early, 10 minutes ahead of time is always good. Uh, check in with the assistant in the courts, dress professionally, um, 
you know, they just remember this, just courtroom decorum to stand up and speak into the microphone uh, when talking to the judge uh, to tell the judge what isn't what they believe is in disputes, uh, tell the judge what evidence that they believe supports the case, and they can refer to the documents that they've brought and attached to their response, uh, ask the judge for a specific um, uh, relief, a uh, specific way, uh, order to come out of the, uh, out of the hearing. Um, and, and make sure the judge knows that whether or not they've been to mediation or not, or whether or not there's a loss mitigation application pending. Uh, and then the judge was going to make their decision. Um, unfortunately, lots of times the judges will enter an order of summary judgment. Um, again, that's because they are uh, required to enforce the contract, and that's what the contract says has to happen. Um, in the order of summary judgments, that, that doesn't mean that the borrower has to leave the property right away. In fact, it definitely does not mean that. Um, it, what, all it does is it says the judge, that, that the bank wins the case, and then they, they can then go to sell the, sell the house. Um, it also may include the rights to pursue a deficiency judgments, as we talked about before. Um, there are instances where um, you have to be careful about what the, length, what the order says. Um, I have seen uh, orders that require the borrower to be out of the property um, by the date of the auction sale, and that's not appropriate. The borrower owns the property, you know, owns title to that property until the court approves the sale, which happens after the auction, um, and they have every right to stay in that house through that date that the court approves the sale. If there, if there's so, but, they, but again, the borrower has the right to review any order that's being presented to the judge uh, before it, it goes, and it should check, check that to make sure it doesn't say anything like that. Um, sale has to be advertised for four weeks uh, before the sale can go forward. Uh, so that's another four weeks where the borrower, you know, at least where the borrower will be able to stay, on, stay in the property. Uh, if there's something improper with the sale, uh, which, usually is limited to whether or not the actual auction was conducted improperly um, in front of the courthouse, which is where they're held. Um, then there's then the, the borrower can object to that um, report. Uh, the court then reviews the reports, um, and um, if they find it acceptable, they'll enter an order approving the special master's report. Um, again, borrowers should be cautious about what the what is in that order that the plaintiff uh, that the bank attorney provides to the courts. I have seen orders that say that that uh, order approving the special master's report is all counts as a writ of assistance. Uh, it is not. You have to petition separately for a writ of assistance, uh, and it's improper to, uh, to to do to make that part of that order. Uh, in in my opinion. 30 days um, after that uh, order of proving sale is entered, the borrower has 30 days to, to appeal the case if they find if they think that's appropriate. Um, they have to file a notice of appeal, and then they have to file a docketing statement and open an uh, appellate case. Uh, it's, it's a very, it's a, it's a whole other process. Um, again, speak, you know, seeking legal advice on that would be the smart thing to do. Um, there's also a 30-day redemption period that runs uh, after the order approving the, the special masses report is entered. Uh, we talked about this way back. Um, mortgage con con um, by default, redemption periods in New Mexico are nine months long, but parties can can um, agree to limit that to as little as one month, and all mortgage contracts have that one month limitation. So it is the, the order, the summary judgment order and the order approving sale are gonna have language that says you only have 30 days to redeem the property. There's, you can ask the court for more time, but you have to show that you have the ability to redeem the property. Um, and that means that you have to show that you have however much money was paid at the auction for the property, that you have the ability to um, plus interest in any taxes and insurance uh, paid by the buyer. Um, you have to get that money to them, to the buyer within 30 days. 
There's a whole process for that. Um, again, I do recommend seeking a lawyer for anything related to redemption or selling redemption rights, um, which is also something that borrowers sometimes do uh, if they don't expect to stay in the house. Uh, you cannot be evicted during this period, even if you're not exercising your redemption rights. Okay, and that's another reason why that order approving sales should not be, should not say that it's also a writ for assistance. Because what has to happen is the bank has to give you notice to vacate um, but then before they file their petition or a motion for a writ of assistance. Um, basically, if, if, they, if they're trying to do that ahead of time in, in the uh, order of approving the special master's report, they're trying to skip through this whole process, that's not appropriate. Um, but a borrower who's still in the house, even after all that process is done, can expect to receive that notice to vacate. They can expect to receive that motion. They can respond to that motion. Again, 15 days, the, the, the buyer, the new owner of the property can file a reply um, within another 15 days, and then it's brought before the judge uh, for hearing. Um, you can also you can always show up at the hearing and ask for more time to move. Um, but depending on how much time is has passed already, um, depending on how the case has gone, sometimes the judges will say the borrowers had enough time, um, and, and they may refuse to grant more time to the borrower to move out. So it's important to um, to not, you know, if the, if the case gets to this point, it's extremely important that the borrower is looking for new housing um, and is making every effort to locate something alternative, uh, look, to locate an alternative, because it's hard out there right now to find um, alternative housing that's affordable. And uh, if, they're, if they're not spending, you know, a significant amount of time making, you know, doing that search, um, they, they might end up being evicted. And that's definitely not where they want to end up. And that's the last thing that we want to do, or you know, we would ever want for one of our clients, um, although it does sometimes happen. Um, there's a couple of slides here, just to give you a general overview of the case, uh, post-judgment timeline, and then there's a pre-judgment timeline. Um, I'll let you look at those on your own time. Um, some other resources that are available, uh, legal help. There's uh, the website Law Help New Mexico. Uh, it's it, it's been revamped uh, and it's an exceptional website, um, full of information on a, on a huge range of legal topics uh, and and you know definitions and explanations of concepts that uh, would be useful to someone who's trying to figure out what's going on in a lawsuit. Uh, and there's, there is a section on foreclosures and mortgages. Um, civil legal services, there's a list available, uh, which includes United South Broadway, uh, available on the State Bar's website. And the State Bar also has uh, other programs, Modest Means Helpline, and Legal Resources for the Elderly Program uh, Helplines as well. Uh, housing Counseling, uh, United South Broadway has uh, housing counselors that can assist with submitting uh, document packages to the bank uh, and to the Mortgage Finance Authority for the HALF program. Um, there's also uh, a, a, a search option uh, link right here that will allow you to locate other housing counselors in New Mexico uh, if you so choose. Um, I, I do recommend working with somebody, you know, if, if, if a borrower in this situation that's familiar with loss mitigation, because there's lots of housing counselors that are familiar with the front end of the process, like getting a loan, buying a house, but don't really necessarily understand how to address um, the, the requirements of working with a bank in, in a foreclosure situation, in, you know, at, at, if payments are being missed, um, you know, in, in a you know distress situation. So make sure you understand, make sure if you're choosing to work with a housing counselor that they know, you know, and they have experience with working on that end of the of the process. Um, there's also um, some government agencies that you can file complaints with uh, if you feel that something has been uh, done improper by the, by the bank. Um, there's a Consumer Financial Protection Bureau and the New Mexico Attorney General both have uh, complaints uh, resources. Um, both of those agencies, they, they're not there to represent anybody in court. Um, 
they can't they can and do to a small degree um, potentially you know facilitate some communication with the bank the, the CFPB in particular does try to um, make sure that complaints are you know received by banks and reviewed and 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 responses sent back to the borrower about that but those responses can be very very general and, and minimal um, and may not actually help in any way resolve a situation. Uh, but, it, but the most important thing is, you know, these the governments, the government does not represent somebody in court. They, they will, they might address a situation if, if they see a pattern uh, forming um, by, a, by a bank and, and acting as a bad actor, but that's never, again, going to be something that's going to protect a borrower in a particular foreclosure lawsuit. Um, and that's my presentation today. And I think I, I'm just just shy of the uh, the one hour mark. I, I, I didn't do too bad. <laughs> so I, hopefully we have enough time to answer any questions that someone might have. Thank you, Eric. Very informative. Yes, we have uh, a couple of questions here. Um, one is, is there a citizenship requirement for obtaining assistance, assistance through the HAP program? I don't know of one off the top of my head, but that's a question that's more appropriately directed towards the Mortgage Finance Authority, which administers the program. Um, right, because it is, a, as I understand it, a federal assistance program. It is. It is, it is a federal program. Um, I, I would. I, I could see that there would be, but I don't. I don't recall any of the documentation that they that they request you know apart from a social security number um that would that would be considered a citizenship um requirement but again i haven't i haven't looked at the actual application i personally looked at the application um questions in quite a while so you may want to just look at the actual application questions um and you can and anybody can request um a paper copy and though that would um you know, should tell you whether or not there's that requirement. All right, another question. Uh, I know in the courts, language assistance is available for those that are non-English speakers, mm -hmm. but is there assistance available to borrowers prior to that point uh, for in languages besides English? Um, depends. Um, it depends depends on where in the process you're you're talking about. Um, if you're talking about with a particular bank, maybe. Um, I mean, I, I know I know some banks do make the efforts to try to have alternate language options. Um, I I am told that those are inconsistent, but again, that's but I but I've never had to use one of those myself. Um, Many many uh, organizations will have Spanish speaking at least available uh, in New Mexico. I know that we have other um, languages that could could provide barriers, um, but lots of times it might it you know it, it is necessary to obtain um, the assistance of uh, either if not a professional interpreter, a family member or friends or colleague uh, or, or you know community leader that has the ability to to translates um as best as you know as best they can to assist oh terrific thank you eric um are there any other uh questions there from anyone in the audience yes we have a question let me pull that up eric hold on has the home new mexico homeowner assistance fund run out of funding no they 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 still have money if 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 anyone's looking to apply, I encourage you to do so. Um, and and again, I um, do do to, you know offer uh, United South Broadway services. We do operate statewide. Um, uh, so you no know, matter where you are in the states, we can we can assist. Our our housing counselors um, are available to anybody, regardless of their income levels. Um, our legal services are restricted to low, low income clients. Um, so maybe, maybe our legal services wouldn't be available, but, um, like I said, 
you know, we, we at least have professionals on staff that can assist with putting together applications and following up on those applications to ensure that the uh, application is fully completed and, and the person at least has a chance of getting that grant. Terrific. Are there any other questions from any of the participants? Now's your opportunity to pose those questions. Great. Well, I'm going to assume that we are uh, done with those questions. I do want to uh, hold on a second here. I'm trying to put something up on the screen. Uh, I do want to, uh, first of all, thank uh, everyone for putting this event together. That includes our folks from the Administrative Office of the Courts, Tesha Henderson and Twyla Hoon Witt. Thank you for uh, making this possible. And Eric, thank you and United South Broadway Corporation for uh, your support. And I know you guys have been leading the charge on this topic for many, many years now and are an important feature in our community for helping people stay in their homes. And if any of you out there have clients in your respective uh, organizations that you and communities that you deal with, and uh, you feel that uh, some of them may be in, in jeopardy in terms of mortgage foreclosure, Please, as, as Eric mentioned, uh, start uh, getting assistance early in the process. The earlier you can start obtaining assistance, the better uh, potentially for your outcomes. So uh, there is assistance available out there uh, for individuals. Uh, and so please uh, make sure that you get that assistance or seek out that assistance as soon as possible. Eric, is there anything else you wanna add uh, for folks here uh, that they should be have on their radar here in New Mexico? Um, again, for any organization that is looking for um, additional information, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. We have, um, you know, we, we have publications, you know, documents, flyers uh, that we can send out to distribute if that might help you, um, or if you just have general questions about foreclosures and um, foreclosure practices, uh, and, and just and borrow and questions for about borrowing in general. Um, and home and home ownership. Please feel free to reach out to us and me, and uh, be happy to help you as best as we can. Much appreciated, Eric. Thank you, and thank you all for uh, tuning in. You, if you uh, signed up for this uh, presentation, you'll be receiving a link uh, with uh, a copy up to the uh, presentation that will be posted online. We have a YouTube channel uh, for the uh, New Mexico courts, and this uh, presentation will be posted there. And also, uh, if you uh, uh, registered, we will and you request it, we will send you Eric's uh, slide deck as well. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us, and uh, have a good rest of your day.